Your guide to carrots. This root vegetable is crunchy, tasty, and nutritious. They're mostly known for their bright orange color, though carrots can also come in white, yellow, red, and purple. Carrots are loaded with beta carotene, a highly nutritious antioxidant that converts to vitamin A in your body. Carrots are super versatile and can be incorporated into a large variety of dishes. Before we get started, let's learn a little bit about carrots. True leaves. The first leaves of a plant that look more like its mature leaves, not the very first leaves to emerge. True leaves are typically larger and have a different shape than the seedling leaves. Taproot. This is the actual carrot that you eat. It's the main tapering root of the carrot plant that grows downward and secondary roots are attached to it. Pelleted seeds. Seeds that have an inactive clay coating that enlarges them, making them easier to handle and sow. The clay coating also improves germination by attracting moisture. Shoulder. The top of the carrot that typically becomes visible as the root grows and the plant matures. Crown. The part of the carrot where the leaves meet the taproot. When the leaves are clipped, the short remaining stems look like a crown on top of the carrot. There are five general varieties of carrots for you to choose from. Nantes. These varieties are easy for home growers and produce sweet carrots that are typically six to seven inches, 15 to 17.5 centimeters long with blunt tips. Nantes carrots tend to keep their shape a lot better in heavy rocky soils that would otherwise cause misshapen carrots of other varieties. Nantes carrots include varieties like Bolero, Nelson, and Scarlet Nantes. Imperator. These carrots need carefully prepared soils to a minimum depth of 12 inches, 30 centimeters. Typically, they're the ones you most often see in grocery stores with long tapered roots. Imperator carrots include varieties like Autumn King and Atomic Red. Chantenay. These carrots are short and plump with broad crowns and are good varieties to grow in heavy rocky soil. Varieties include Hercules, Red Cord Chantenay, and Mini. Danvers. These carrots are nicely tapered and well adapted to heavy soil. They are easy carrots to grow and include varieties like Danvers Half Long. Ball slash Baby. These carrots are either harvested before maturity or only grow to short lengths. Some also grow as round bulb-like carrots, similar to how a radish would grow. Varieties include Paris Market, Babette, Thumbelina, Little Finger, and Short and Sweet. Fun fact. A salt and pepper shaker can be used to spread non-pelleted carrot seed. Carrots will grow best in full sun. Their minimum air temperature tolerance is 41 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, while their maximum is 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 degrees Celsius. Hot temperatures can actually cause bitterness in your carrots, so keep that in mind. As a result, they prefer consistent weather conditions and will thrive in loose, sandy loam soils with good water retention. If your soil doesn't hold moisture well, you can add some organic matter to improve it. As well, carrots like soil with a pH between 6.0 and 6.8, and their ideal soil temperature, when directly sowing, is between 65 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 to 20 degrees Celsius. We'll tell you everything you need to know about how to prepare your soil, spacing and thinning your carrots, and how best to water them. We'll also cover fertilizer and mulch, transplanting, companion plants, and your growing structure options. Soil preparation. Carrots are root vegetables, so they grow best when the soil is light and worked deeply. For full-sized, long carrots, your soil should be cultivated at a depth of 18 inches. For shorter or round varieties, this depth can be a bit lower, to about 12 to 16 inches. Make sure to remove all rocks and debris from your soil that could interfere with the growing path of your carrots' taproots. Sowing and spacing. Carrot seeds are sown by planting a lot of seeds in rows and then later thinning them. This helps to ensure high germination while boosting their emergence success rates. Rows should be spaced 12 to 18 inches apart, 30 to 45 centimeters, and seeds should be sown a quarter to a half inch deep. Thinning. 
This is an important step because it reduces competition for nutrients and space, allowing for better and bigger carrots. When your plants reach four inches in height, thin your carrots so that there's about two inches between each carrot. Simply use a pair of scissors to cut the green tops off the carrots you're thinning because pulling the young plants out can cause damage to their neighboring plant roots. Thin again once the carrots are larger so that each plant stands four inches apart. At this stage, it's safe to thin by pulling out the unwanted plants since roots are established and developed enough to prevent any damage to their neighbors. Watering. Pre-emergence. Keep your soil moist during germination. From the time of sowing to the time of emergence, you'll want to water your carrot crop frequently, in low quantities. Post-emergence. After the carrots have emerged and have developed a few true leaves, continue to give them enough moisture. But by now, watering should be less frequent and in smaller volumes. By lowering the amount of water at the soil surface, the roots of your carrot plants will focus on growing downwards and deeper. In the later stages of a carrot's growth cycle, when the taproot is growing out more than down, water your carrot plants less often in higher volumes. On average, carrots need about one inch of water per week. And keep in mind that excess moisture can lead to root rot. Weeding. Make sure to keep your carrot beds well weeded. This can be done by hand or by careful cultivation, but you have to be extremely careful not to cause any damage to the taproot. Fertilizer. When your carrots have four inch, 10 centimeter greens, fertilize them using an NPK, nitrogen phosphorus potassium solution with a ratio of eight to 12 to six. Or you can use an alternative organic fertilizer with a ratio of four to four to four. For best results, make sure you follow the manufacturer instructions for the specific amounts and restrictions. Note, excess nitrogen results in fuller tops and can make your plants more susceptible to disease. Mulching. Organic mulch, like straw or pine needles, can be used to help suppress weeds in your carrot patch. Mulching carrot crops can be a little tedious since they're typically tightly spaced and mulch shouldn't come in contact with plant stems. To avoid this, simply leave a two inch gap in between your plants. Mulch will also suppress seeds and prevent emergence, so it should only be applied once your seedlings have emerged and are established. For this reason, it might be a good idea to only mulch in between your rows of carrots in their early growth stages. The cool thing is that as carrots grow, their leaves shade the soil, helping to suppress weeds on their own. Transplanting best practices. Carrots are root vegetables, so they grow best when directly seeded, as opposed to being transplanted. Transplanting can be quite tricky because carrot roots can easily become stunted. If you do need to transplant, do so only about one to two weeks after sowing your seeds indoors. Even this is risky due to the immaturity of the plant and the stress caused by transplanting. Companion plants do's and don'ts. Do's. Plant your carrots alongside broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, collard, kale, kohlrabi, chive, leeks, lettuce, peas, radish, arugula, bush beans, mint, onion, parsley, peppers, rosemary, sage, scallions, spinach, tomatoes, beans, and garlic. These companions work to improve your carrot yield, deter or distract pests, and some can provide certain nutrients that are needed for your carrot's growth. Don'ts. Avoid planting your carrots with or near celery, dill, potatoes, or parsnips. Potatoes and parsnips are other root vegetables and will compete with carrots for phosphorus in the soil. Growing structure options. Raised beds. If your soil is high in clay content, grow your carrots in raised beds for improved drainage. Carrots do very well in raised beds because of the improved soil drainage around their roots, but make sure to give your carrots enough soil depth to grow without resistance. Typically, carrots need at least 18 to 24 inches, 45 to 60 centimeters of soil depth to develop their roots properly. Containers. 
Carrots can be grown in containers as long as they have enough soil depth. 18 to 24 inches, 45 to 60 centimeters will do the trick. Containers also need to have holes in their bottoms for good drainage, and carrots grown in this option will need to be watered more frequently since the shallow soil will dry out faster. Potential pests. Aphids. These tiny pests come in a variety of colors, green, black, red, light orange, or yellow, and mainly feed on the undersides of leaves and stems. What they're actually feeding on is the sap in plants, which ends up causing the plants damage. Aphids also leave behind a sticky substance called honeydew, and they are a pest that's known to spread diseases. Aphids can be tolerated by most plants when their numbers are low, but if there's a lot of aphids, they can stunt a plant's growth and cause a plant's leaves to turn yellow and fall off. Here's what to do. For the most part, plants can handle mild aphid infestations, but if they're found, a strong jet of water from a garden hose will wash them off the plants. Spraying plants with water should be done early in the morning so that the plants can dry off during the day. Sticky traps, neem oil, insecticidal soaps, and horticultural oils are also effective against aphids. Just be sure to follow the application instructions on the packaging. Oftentimes, you can also get rid of aphids by wiping or spraying the leaves with a mild solution of water and a few drops of dish soap. One variation includes adding a pinch of cayenne pepper. Soapy water should be reapplied every two to three days or about two weeks. As well, you can try to attract beneficial insects like lady beetles, hoverflies, and lacewings, all of which are important aphid predators. Make sure to check all transplants for aphids before planting. And keep in mind that aphids aren't very mobile, so it's not uncommon to find one heavily affected plant surrounded by plants that are fine. If this is the case, simply remove and destroy the infected plant. Carrot rust fly. Female flies lay eggs in the soil, and after hatching, larvae will enter and damage the roots of plants. These attacked plants either die or they grow small roots, which can't be eaten. Other pests and diseases can then enter the infected plant, causing rot diseases. Here's what to do. Practice crop rotation, control weeds, and cover seed beds with floating row covers before any seedlings emerge. Also, paraffin-soaked rags tend to discourage carrot rust flies, while companion planting with onion can also help. Carrot fly nematodes, or sticky traps, are other useful remedies, and be sure to also destroy any crop residue after harvest. Leaf hoppers. These tiny, wedge-shaped, light-colored, green or gray, insects suck the plant's juices. They can stunt a plant's growth, cause leaves to become spotted, and leafhoppers also carry and spread many diseases. Here's what to do. Crop rotation, weed control, cover crop planting, and companion planting are all important ways to help lower the risk of damage done by pests. The use of row cover slash insect netting can also help to control leaf hoppers. As well, insect soaps and neem products are both effective ways to prevent and eliminate a leaf hopper infestation. Root Knot Nematodes. These are microscopic worms that for the most part, don't cause any problems. They can, however, hurt a plant's roots and prevent those plants from absorbing water and nutrients. Sometimes those roots become knotted or forked. The damage done by these pests can cause plants to become discolored and wilted and can also reduce plant yields. Here's what to do. Crop rotation, weed control, Cover crop planting and companion planting are all important ways to help lower the risk of damage done by root rot nematodes. The use of row cover slash insect netting 
can also help to control these pests. Also by adding organic matter to the soil, it'll boost populations of beneficial, predatory microorganisms that can help prevent a harmful nematode outbreak. Wireworms. The larvae of this pest feed on germinating seeds or young seedlings, especially feeding on the roots of plants. The stems of young seedlings may emerge shredded, while damaged plants are likely to wilt and die soon after becoming infected. Wireworm infestations are more likely to happen where grasses, especially perennials, have been growing. These pests mature after two to six years and will then appear brown in color and about one inch long. Here's what to do. If the risk of wireworm damage is high, Seeds can be treated with an approved insecticide to protect them while germinating and to further protect them as seedlings. Crop rotation, weed control, cover crop planting, and companion planting are also important ways to help lower the risk of damage done by pests in general. Finally, the use of row cover slash insect netting can also help to control wireworms. Potential diseases and their solutions. Aster yellows. A bacterial infection that causes leaves to turn red and also causes massive pale shoots to grow from the crown. Carrots infected with aster yellows also tend to be really hairy and have a poor flavor. Here's what to do. Practice a crop rotation of at least three years rotating between crops from other families to avoid carrying the same disease and pests over from year to year. As well, don't water carrots in the evening, since the wet and cool conditions promote bacterial and fungal growth. Keep weeds under control throughout the growing cycle too, and space plants properly for good airflow to help reduce humidity. Also, do not over-fertilize carrots. When carrots are over-fertilized, it promotes a growth surplus in carrot greens and reduces airflow around the crop. It's also helpful to harvest carrots in cool weather and to quickly get them into storage. Finally, make sure to keep pests, especially leaf hoppers, under control. Bacterial Soft Rotten Carrots A bacterial infection that typically sets in after harvest once carrots are in storage. Carrots need to be damaged in some way for this bacterium to infect them, which is why it's important to handle carrots with care during and after their harvest. Also, you'll want to avoid close cutting of the crown. Here's what to do. Practice a good crop rotation of at least three years, rotating between crops from other families to avoid carrying the same diseases and pests over from year to year. As well, avoid watering carrots in the evening, since the wet and cool conditions promote bacterial and fungal growth. Keep weeds under control throughout the growing season too, and space plants properly for a good airflow to help reduce humidity. Also, avoid over-fertilizing carrots. When carrots are over-fertilized, it promotes a growth surplus in carrot greens and reduces airflow among the carrot crop. It's also helpful to harvest carrots in cool weather and to quickly get them into storage. But it's important to handle carrots with care during and after their harvest. Also, avoid close cutting of the crown and make sure to keep pests, especially leaf hoppers, under control. Cavity spot. A fungal disease that causes horizontal cuts on mature carrot roots. It favors cool, damp conditions. Here's what to do. Practice a crop rotation of at least three years, rotating between crops from other families to avoid carrying the same diseases and pests over from year to year. As well, don't water carrots in the evening, since the wet and cool conditions promote bacterial and fungal growth. Avoid overwatering as well and use raised beds to help with soil drainage. Keep weeds under control throughout the growing cycle too, and space plants properly for good airflow to help reduce humidity. Also, do not over-fertilize carrots. When carrots are over-fertilized, 
It promotes a growth surplus in carrot greens and reduces airflow around the crop. It's also helpful to harvest carrots in cool weather and to quickly get them into storage. Finally, make sure to keep pests, especially leafhoppers, under control. The varieties Copopride, Navajo, Orlando Gold, and Six Pack are all resistant to cavity spot. Slerotinia rot, aka white mold. A fungal disease that causes cotton-like white mold to form on infected plants. Irregular gray water-soaked lesions will appear on the leaves, while white-gray lesions appear on the plant stems. Sometimes the leaves and branches will also turn slimy. During warm and humid weather, plants are often completely destroyed. This fungus can survive in the soil for more than five years, and it is spread by wind, contaminated water, and by infected seeds. Here's what to do. Plant resistant varieties when possible. Practice proper crop rotation and keep planting beds well-drained. Also, add aged compost, avoid overhead watering, and keep the garden free of debris and weeds. It also helps to avoid using excessive nitrogen fertilizer and to also keep rows spaced widely apart. If white mold is found on any plants, potassium bicarbonate is a safe, effective fungicide that kills spores on contact. Like baking soda, Potassium bicarbonate is also a great preventative treatment because it raises the pH level of soil above 8.3, an alkaline environment that isn't ideal for fungus to grow. Simply mix three tablespoons of potassium bicarbonate, three tablespoons vegetable oil, and one half teaspoon of soap together into a gallon of water, then spray it onto the affected plants. Baking soda itself has a high pH of nine, so it can also help to raise the pH level of soil for plants. And the baking soda creates a very alkaline environment that kills the fungus. Typically though, baking soda is best used as a preventative treatment rather than a fungicide. Mix one tablespoon of baking soda and a half teaspoon liquid hand soap with one gallon of water. Then spray the solution on affected leaves, but don't apply it during daylight hours. It might also be best to test one or two leaves first to see if it causes sunburn to the plants. In general though, as soon as diseased plants are noticed, those plants should be destroyed immediately. If the soil is infected, try to remove as much of it as possible and then replace it with clean soil. Barriers like plastic or mulch can also be used to cover the infected ground and prevent the spread of the disease. If possible, it's also important to remove all crop residue after harvesting. This disease can survive and develop if residue is left behind. And since white mold spores are long lasting, the spores could survive the winter in this residue, if given the chance. Harvesting. Check to see if your carrots are ready for harvest by brushing the soil off its shoulder and see its width. As well, you can harvest your carrots as baby carrots before the root reaches maturity. Baby carrots will be sweeter and more tender, but mature carrots will have more nutrients and sugar. Note, carrots left in the ground too long become woody and start to lose their flavor. If you're growing carrots for storage, they should be harvested once they're mature. You can do so after a few light frosts, but make sure you harvest before a hard frost when the ground starts to harden. To harvest, gently pull the carrot or use a garden fork to loosen and lift the surrounding soil. Then cut the tops off your crop, leaving about a half inch of green stem attached to each carrot. You'll want to clean off any remaining dirt, but do not remove any of the tap root or the root hairs since this can promote decay in storage. Finally, allow your carrots to air dry first before you store them. Note: Light frosts can happen at 34 degrees Fahrenheit, one degree Celsius and hard frosts typically happen when temperatures get as low as 28 degrees Fahrenheit, negative two degrees Celsius. Storing. Store your carrots in temperatures between 32 to 38 degrees Fahrenheit, zero to three degrees Celsius, that have 98% humidity. As long as your carrots aren't damaged, they're mature, and storage conditions are met, 
they should store well for several months. Check on your stored carrots from time to time, just to make sure they aren't decaying. If you spot any decayed carrots, make sure to remove them. A pro snacking tip is to eat the smallest carrots first. Carrots can also be stored in the refrigerator in airtight freezer bags. All you have to do is lay similar sized carrots in a single layer in a bag, remove the air, then seal it. Note, ethylene gives carrots a bitter taste. So store them away from apples, bananas, and other fruits that give off ethylene. Did you know you can eat carrot greens? They are great as a basil substitute and pesto, or also as a parsley substitute.